Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In this video, we're going to talk about the residual of a matrix system, AX equal B. We'll see that we can use the residual as a way to quantify the error in a numerical linear algebra solution to this problem. And we'll derive several useful mathematical results and take a look at a few examples. When we looked at linearly squares problems, we found that the residual r of x is equal to b minus ax was a crucial definition. And we defined our solutions to linearly squares problems in terms of minimizing the size of this residual. The residual is also useful when we come to assess the accuracy of a computed numerical solution, x hat, to a square linear system, ax equal b. And the key reason for this is that the residual r of x hat is something that we can compute. We may be more interested in knowing the difference between our computed solution x hat and the true mathematical solution x, defined as delta x is equal to x minus x hat, but in general that's not something that we can compute directly. Now if we look at the norm of delta x, that will be equal to the norm of x minus x hat, and that will be equal to zero if and only if the residual of x hat is equal to zero. However, a small residual doesn't necessarily imply that we have a small norm of delta x. So now let's write out an expression for the norm of delta x. This equal to the norm of x minus x hat, and that's equal to the norm of a inverse applied to b minus a of x hat, and that is the norm of a inverse multiplied by r of x hat. And that will be less than or equal to the norm of a inverse multiplied by the norm of r of x hat. So from here, we could write down that the norm of delta x divided by the norm of x hat is less than or equal to the norm of a inverse times the norm of r of x hat divided by the norm of x hat. And we can introduce factors of the norm of a in the numerator and denominator and then combine two terms. Together this will be equal to the condition number of a times the norm of r of x hat divided by the norm of a times the norm of x hat. And if we look at these final three terms here, they form a nice combination here. We're taking our residual and we're scaling it both by the matrix size and the vector size. So this will give us an expression that we can define to be the relative residual. So in that case, our inequality states that the relative error is bounded by the condition number times the relative residual. And this is very similar now to how we thought about condition numbers back in unit zero. So in this case here, we're thinking about our input values as being our vector b, and our output values as being x. And so from unit zero, we could write down that the condition number of our matrix A would be greater than or equal to the norm of our perturbation, delta x, divided by the norm of x, over the norm of delta b divided by the norm of b. And that could be rewritten then as saying that the norm of delta x divided by the norm of x is less than or equal to the condition number times the norm of delta b divided by the norm of b. So we now have two kind of closely related quantities. And the reason why we can make a direct connection here is that the residual really measures the input perturbation in our system ax equal b. To see this, let's think of ax equal b to be a map from a vector b to a vector x. And we can therefore consider x hat to be the exact solution for some perturbed input b hat equal to b plus delta b. So therefore a of x hat is equal to b hat. So the residual associated with x hat is equal to r of x hat, and that's equal to b minus a times x hat, and that's equal to b minus b hat, which is equal to minus delta b. 
and therefore the norm of R of X hat is just equal to the norm of delta B. And that allows us to make this direct connection between our two expressions involving the condition number. So in general, therefore, a numerically stable algorithm should give us the exact solution to a slightly perturbed problem, i.e. we want a small residual. And that's a reasonable expectation for a stable algorithm, so that rounding error does not accumulate, and the effective input perturbation is small. To illustrate this inequality, let's look at example 2.8, taken from Michael Heath's textbook on scientific computing. So, if we look at a problem a x equal b, and we define our matrix A here to have entries of 0 0.913, 0 0.659, 0 0.457, and 0 0.330, and our vector B to have entries of 0.254 and 0.127. And you can verify that for this matrix problem, the exact solution is given by 1, comma minus 1. So now let's look at two proposed numerically computed solutions, x at 1, with components of minus 0 0.0827 and, and 0.5, and x at 2 that has components of 0.999 and minus 1.001. And so we can see here that x at 2 is definitely closer to our true solution x. Now, if we look at the residuals for these two cases, we find that the residual for our first proposed solution is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the minus 4, whereas our residual for the second solution is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the minus 2. But we see here that the delta x for our first solution is 2.58, whereas the delta x for our second solution is 0.002. And we see, therefore, that even though the second solution, x at 2, is the better solution, it has a larger residual. And this is possible because the condition number for this matrix is equal to 1.25 times 10 to the 4. And therefore, we still have this inequality satisfied that the relative error is less than or equal to 1.25 times 10 to the 4 times the relative residual.